Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking about whether Portland should change the way the city council has worked for more than 100 years. Once again, welcome to my guest, one of the authors of a city club report recommending changes, Sarah Carlin Ames, Misha Webley from the Northeast Coalition of Neighborhoods, and former city commissioner Steve Novick. Once again, great to have you all here to talk about this important topic. I mentioned in the first segment, Joanne Hardesty, our current commissioner, the first woman of color. She thinks that we should change the system. She supports the change. She doesn't say exactly what, but she thinks we should change. She was on Straight Talk last month, and here's what she said. I was elected in spite of the system that we have. We have the tradition of downtown white males being elected to city council because they have more access to the money interests that will fund political campaigns. I disagree with my colleagues who say I'm an example as to why the system works. I got in there in spite of the system that we have, right? Um, and I think it's probably why there hasn't been more women and more people of color who've actually been successful in running for city council. So Sarah, what do you think? Is the city of Portland ready to make a change? Misha, you were saying that we like to be weird and they've turned this down many times, and most recently in 2007. Are they ready? I think they are ready. And you know, I, you kind of also see the weird isn't working. You've seen that bumper sticker too. Um, because I think there's a growing sense out there that it's not working after all. We love our city. I've lived here for 40 plus years, but there's, it's just like, it's not rising to the challenges of that we're facing right now and there's a huge I think dissatisfaction with the way the city is is heading right now and there's a poll to indicate maybe they are ready for a change this poll was from the Portland Business Alliance conducted by DHM it shows Portlanders may also be ready to elect commissioners by geographic district rather than at large citywide the poll shows 70 percent of likely voters support changing council elections from citywide to districts that's a 16 point increase Increase since a DHM poll taken in 2016. There's another part of that poll shows slightly more than half of the voters in the greater Portland region, speaking to what you said, Sarah, say the quality of life is getting worse. They seem dissatisfied about 51%. Steve, you've talked about how you think people are angry at City Hall. Do you think some of that comes from the form of government? I actually think it probably doesn't. I think it comes from the fact that people are worried about homelessness and rising housing costs. Uh, I think that when this issue was voted on before, people said, well, we kind of like the way the city's going, so why change things? I think that the system itself was just as bad in 2007 as it is now, but now is the perfect time to take advantage of the fact that people are grumpy about the city in general and have them vote on a change of the form of government. Do you think that more could be done, more would be accomplished on some of those things that people uh, are concerned about if we had a different form of government? I think more would be accomplished, including on issues that simply get swept under the rug. Um, talk about inequity. We have a statewide property tax system that in a really complicated way results in people in Far East Portland paying far higher property taxes than people in recently gentrified areas of Northeast. Now, that requires a statewide vote to change the system, but Portland commissioners should have been prioritizing lobbying the legislature to address that. But the statewide property tax reform doesn't fall within anybody's bureau. So under this system, Portland city commissioners have neglected it. So nobody's like looking at, at the big picture. Mm -hmm. Misha, you, Misha, on your uh, website, the Northeast Coalition of Northeast Neighborhoods, you're also a filmmaker yeah. and you've made a film, a, a fun film with cats mm -hmm. to try to describe how our system works, why it should change. Tell us a little bit about that cat video. Well, sure, I mean, for, first of all, to talk about public policy with most people, you need to do something that'll get them to watch it. So why not throw some cute cats in there? And, um, but really it's, it, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's, it's complicated, it's not that complicated. Uh, and, and we really wanna have fun and we try to, uh, you know, communicate some complex issues to people so that they know. What we have found is that once you break this down to people in simple terms, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, most people, uh, or at least quite a few people, just don't understand that we have any, our system of government is unique at all. Once they understand some of the nuances and intricacies of it, they say, well, yeah, well, that, that's, that doesn't make any sense. And really, you know, it's about Portland's, Portland's growing up. I mean, you know, we all know it. We're, we're experiencing growing pains. And maybe this worked before. I wouldn't say it did, but maybe it did. And now uh, Steve we're shaking his head. No, it never worked. <laughs> you know, and now we're seeing the result of. And I think everyone knows, as Sarah was saying, um, there's a growing sense of unease and and, and a sense that just the system is is not working. The status quo uh, will, will not suffice. And I think that that. Uh, 
that's why you're seeing a 70% poll number that might not have been there 10 years ago. And people can check out your, your video on your website. Um, Anycoalition.org. Thank yes. you for, for, <laughs> for saying that. Oh, I also want to mention about how we vote. The, the committee in your report said, we, we mentioned it a couple of times, changing the way we vote. You didn't specifically say how, but in general, what are you talking about? Um, in general, we're talking about having um, instant runoff, some form of instant runoff voting, so that you would elect people only in November instead of having a May primary where typically incumbents win election in a very low turnout um, primary. So citywide, you know, of elected voters, you know, Nick Fish and Dan Salzman, the last time they ran for re-election, got elected with like 17 to 19 percent of voters actually casting yes ballots for them because, you know, they got more than half of a very low turnout election. Um, it would be better to have broader participation in the November election. You can have ranked choice voting. You can have other forms of kind of voting that allows you to cast your vote once and come up with a winner or in the possibility of multi-member districts, the top two finishers or the top three or whatever. So there's different ways of cutting that. And the City Club actually has a research committee that's building on some work by the League of Women Voters and others at looking at what are better ways to make sure we have more equitable representation. Well, Commissioner Hardesty said that she didn't think the City Council should make these decisions. So what's next? How do you get this before voters? The City Council does have a charter review um, process and they have to have a charter review committee um, that, uh, that acts by 2021. Um, those are all council appointed people, so it's a little bit council control. That, you know, it depends how broad this conversation gets and how much feeling of, yeah, this is something we need to tackle as a community. Um, you know, it could be an initiative as well. So we only have a few seconds left, about 15 seconds left for each. But if you could just give me, a, in a nutshell, your, your final argument, Steve. I think that although the existing commissioners, except for Commissioner Hardesty, would be upset at losing bureaus initially, after a bit they'd realize it gives them a lot more freedom to focus on a lot of important issues. Before I had bureaus, I was bringing in experts to talk about uh, new policing practices and thinking about a lot of issues that my bureaus didn't deal with. I think that once they had a new system, the existing commissioners would say, you know what, there's advantages to not having bureaus to worry about. Misha, just only about 10 seconds, we're running out of time. Our country's founded on representation, geographical representation, and that should be reflected in our city and we hear that every day from the residents of our community and I think it's about time. And Sarah, 10 seconds left. I think keeping Portland weird means keeping the council white and I think that we should stop that. <laughs> time to change, you all agree with that. Well, thank you very much for being here <laughs> on Straight Talk. It was a pleasure to have you here. If you want to check out the whole City Club report, you can find it on our website on kgw.com. Thank you for watching Straight Talk. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.